SpaceX has been making serious efforts to make its mission successful, and for this, they are continuously improving their Starship and rockets. Just recently, the company manufactured a new engine known as the Raptor Engine 2, and everyone is talking about it. Hello everyone and welcome to Modern Day Geeks. Today, we're here with another invention done by SpaceX, a company that is owned by Elon Musk. So without further ado, let's get started. You must have heard that SpaceX is creating a Starship, and for this Starship, the company has created a full-flow staged combustion cycle rocket engine known as the Raptor. Unlike other engines, this one is fueled by cryogenic liquid methane and liquid oxygen. The Raptor engine outperforms SpaceX's Merlin 1D engine, which powers the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch vehicles. It is the third FFSCC engine to be constructed and the first to leave the testing stage. Raptor is utilized in both the Super Heavy Lift, Super Heavy Booster, and the Starship Spaceship, which serves as the second stage when launched from Earth and as an autonomous spacecraft in LEO and beyond. Whereas the Starship is said to be utilized for a variety of purposes, which majorly include Earth orbit satellite delivery, the deployment of a substantial chunk of SpaceX's Starlink satellite constellation, exploration, moon landing, and Mars settlement. Sounds like SpaceX has a lot going on inside. Okay, so the first stage of the Starship, known as the Super Heavy, will have 33 Raptor engines. 20 of them will be non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring. 10 will be the gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 will be the gimbling center engines in the innermost ring. This figure is projected to fall in the future as SpaceX improves Raptor. While the Starship's second stage contains 6 engines in total, 3 vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and 3 sea-level gimbling engines, Elon Musk, CEO and CTO of SpaceX, has stated that after the ship's length is increased, 3 more vacuum-optimized engines will be added. Talking about the sea level, let's explore a little about the Raptor's spec for the sea level version. The Raptor engine's expected performance characteristics are for a sea level thrust of 3,050 kilonewtons at a specific impulse of 334 seconds. It employs separate turbines and pumps on the fuel and oxidizer sides as part of a full flow staged combustion cycle. And with boost pumps supplying the required inlet pressure for the operation of the main turbo pumps, it will have a combustion chamber pressure of 300 bar, the highest achieved by an operational liquid-fueled rocket engine as of now. Also, this version has a nozzle ratio of 40, resulting in a nozzle diameter of 1.7 meters and an expansion tailored for operation in the observable atmosphere, as the booster will only work at heights of slightly more than 100 kilometers. According to a basic calculation utilizing the known vacuum impulse of 361 seconds, the baseline Raptor sea level has a vacuum thrust of 3,297 kilonewtons. According to earlier information by Elon Musk, calculations also produce a propellant flow rate of 931 kilograms per second at a mixture ratio of 3.8, while tank sizes on the ITS vehicles suggest a mix closer to 3.7. Raptor, like the Merlin 1D series, can handle exceptionally deep throttling. With stable combustion, which is achievable at 20% of rated thrust, this allows the ITS booster to fly variable ascent profiles and actively throttle its engines on the way back to a propulsive landing, which requires active control of the vehicle's thrust-to-weight ratio. Raptor is made of SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy, copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. Till now, there is no information about them being altered between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a tiny amount of 3D printing. However, because of the inability to scale, high cost, and low manufacturing rate, SpaceX is attempting to eliminate as much 3D printing as possible. One of Raptor's most astounding specs is its gimbling range. The engine can gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axes, which is required for Starship's flip and burn landing. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is quite large. The RS-25 gimbals to 12.5 degrees and the SpaceX Merlin engine gimbals to 5 degrees. So this is quite an achievement for SpaceX. SpaceX has made the engine more fire and heat resistant by removing a major portion of these components. This is a definite step towards SpaceX's aim of removing all engine obscuring from the booster, which would reduce the booster's mass by 6 tons. This just reminds us of Musk's slogan, the best part is no part. 
Another modification made to Raptor 2 to reduce engine bulk is the elimination of the torch igniters in the primary combustion chamber. Instead of depending on redundant torch igniters, the well-mixed hot oxygen gas and hot CH4 gas act hypergolic in the main combustion chamber due to the high temperature and pressure. One of the noticeable changes is the opening of the throat, which allowed more propellant to pass into the engine and increase thrust. This modification reduces the expansion ratio, which is the ratio of the area of the nozzle output to the size of the throat. The higher the expansion ratio, the more work the nozzle has to do to convert high pressure into high velocity, raising the engine's specific impulse. Despite the drop in exhaust velocity, the increase in thrust significantly increases the booster's efficiency due to reduced gravity drag. We see Musk having some plans for the Raptor engine starting with the target of Raptor's cost per ton of thrust to be less than $1,000, which means Raptor must cost $250,000 to construct. Furthermore, SpaceX is seeking to eliminate all throat film cooling from the engine. SpaceX might do this through a variety of means, including extra head-end film cooling or running the MCC at a higher fuel richness. SpaceX is now investigating whether the trade-off of omitting throat film cooling would be advantageous. Overall, it is evident that Raptor is still in its early stages. The engine, like the Merlin engine, will continue to evolve as SpaceX flies more and produces more. The U.S. Air Force granted a $40.8 million modification contract in October 2017 for the development of the Raptor engine prototype for the Evolved Expendable Launch Vehicle Program, with work under that contract expected to be completed by April 2018. This contract simply required the creation and construction of a prototype, which would be proven in a series of tests overseen by the USAF. The deal did not include funding for advanced vehicle design and redesign. The results of the prototype build and testing program were not made public because it was a DOD military project. Let's see how the Raptor 2 works in the long run and how much business SpaceX makes from this. So that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button and hit the bell icon on your way out. We're the Modern Day Geeks and see you soon in our next video. Adios.